In this video, we're going to install Cognos Analytics version 11.0.x following these instructions here. And the first step is to go down to the installing and configuring PDF. I like to use a PDF and I've got notes in a PDF, but you're also welcome to follow the instructions on the Knowledge Center, which are essentially the same instructions. And if you go to this Wikipedia page here about Cognos, you will see a section about products. And if you're new to Cognos, this should be helpful because although we are installing 11, much of it does depend on 10 or is related to 10, although you'll see that some, I'll let you read through this, but you'll see some of these components, which are listed down below, have been de-emphasized and actually sort of rolled up into a single report sort of inter interface. These are the old studios we have scorecards you have the analysis studio this is helpful when you're reading the manual because the instruction manual because you will see references to these things now this video is made for ibm counter fraud management or icfm and so we'll be installing on the optional supplemental server but these instructions should work in any environment including one that's not ibm counter fraud management we are working with red hat enterprise linux 6.8 santiago and we're going to start here review the release notes. This information is pretty generic and so you'll need a specific URL and that's this one here which if you read through it is also fairly generic and really doesn't apply to us. However because this is the preparing to install document I would recommend that you go to the Cognos Redbook so that's the Business Intelligence 10.1 and I know this is a video about 11 but this book which is free will give you an idea of the architecture which hasn't changed much in 11 and I would definitely study this chart a bit. So if I'm a client out here, meaning some sort of computer, Cognos is web-based, and so it's going to connect into this gateway, and then the message will get dispatched out, especially in a high availability or distributed environment, off to a dispatcher, and then the Cognos Content Manager, which itself sort of handles the, re the request, can distribute that out across the other to the dispatchers across to the available report servers and the report servers will connect into your actual database meanwhile cognos itself stores its information about its configuration and where these data sources are located and that sort of thing in what's called a content store that's located here and then of course there's a security namespace so this will make a this will help for your installation if you can understand this diagram okay so back to this page notice that one of the requirements is that you have these uh, packages installed although interestingly enough mine work just fine without these so if you need them here they are and just to be clear when I installed Red Hat Enterprise Linux on this machine I selected desktop on this screen okay let's move down to page 10 okay so let's do a yum update here okay that looks good I would also recommend installing screen here Okay, and let's move down to the next page, and we'll talk about hardware requirements. The RAM is really important. It says you need a minimum of 10. I'm going to give ours 12. I found that with 8, it wouldn't load. So mine's currently at 8. I'm going to give it 12. I'll click OK and reboot this VM. Okay, so we'll do a free-m, or you can do a top. You'll see we have 12 gigs of RAM. That looks good, so that takes us through here. Okay, now file descriptor limits are actually covered on page 14, so I'm going to skip down there. It's discussed in this section here. And so I'm literally just going to copy and paste these all the way down. Okay, there they are. Now I'm going to also do these. So we'll go into here and I'll change the color scheme so that's really hard to read. And I'll press Shift G to go down to the end of the file. And I will literally just copy and paste them in here. Now these refer to users. We're going to create a Cognos user in a few minutes. Okay, then I'll press Escape capital Z Z to save it okay so that takes us back here so we have file descriptors those are good we have disk space all those are fine so we are not going to use a printer in this case but we do need an email server now I don't have telnet installed but you can use this Linux command to open up port 25 and sure enough we have a response there so for software requirements we need a JRE and the instructions here, of course, do say that the IBM JRE is installed automatically with the IBM Cognos Analytics. So for what it's worth, we already have our own Java here, but let's follow the instructions as it is. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down to page 14, and you'll see that there's a mention about 
cryptographic standards. Now, unfortunately, we can't do this until after we've installed the software, so we'll come back to this. And it's the same story for page 15. I'm going to skip down to page 22, and we're going to work on user accounts now. So as root, I'm going to add a new group called Cognos. Then I'm going to create a new user and add it to that group, and then set the password for Cognos. Make sure it's not too simple. And now we need to get to our download. So this command will connect me to a Windows share and put it in slash mount, and there are my files. Now here you need to pre-create your directory, so that's what this is doing, and it's creating all of the subfolders required, which is what pat-p will do. And then I'm going to set the owner to Cognos, and uh, the owner and the group to Cognos for that folder, and then we'll set the permissions. Okay, and now we will log into X Windows as that user. Right click on the desktop, open in terminal, and we'll do a vim tilde, which takes us into our home directory, bash rc. So this is what's controlling uh, bash, our shell. And I'll put in these aliases. Now, you don't need any of these aliases. These are just for um, our benefit. You'll see you all use them later on. Okay, and I'll exit out of here. And I'll open up my folder here. And I'm going to switch over to putty to download the file here. And I'm only using putty because it's much faster and let's prone to typos. This is the file is the actual server binary that we need to run. And that is explained here on page 80. Step 5 of which, by the way, talks about IA temp directory. You don't need to manually set that, but IA stands for the install anywhere that we talked about earlier. Okay, so now I'm going to do an LL here. I see my download. And I'm going to run that. Now, although you could just run this directly, I would recommend you do an sh-x, which is explained pretty nicely here. It's going to give us a lot of debug information in case anything goes wrong. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. And notice these slash temp slash install dot dir, that is the install anywhere approach to storing files during the installation. So in other words, if something goes wrong, go look in your slash temp slash install directory for whatever uh, logs you can find there. That takes us to this screen, click next, accept the license terms, click next, and click next, note the path, that's what we've been working with. And here we're going to click these two. We're not going to set up the gateway, that's more complicated. We want a basic but working install right now. And this is our first install, so click next and then click install and notice in the lower left corner install anywhere that is the product that IBM is using to do the installation this in the meanwhile is setting up our IA temp directory in order to run and when everything's done you should see a congratulations screen go ahead and click on done so now if you remember back to page 11 you'll see an IBM JRE is installed automatically with Cognos that is not accurate. What this means is that the install anywhere will unpack its own JRE, but it will not install one for you. And you can confirm that with this command. So what you'll need to install your own JRE. Ours was already installed as part of Counterfraud, but of course you'll need to go and find your own. So now I'm going to skip to page 15, clear off the screen, and we need to set up our environment variables. So I'm going to switch users to Cognos. We're going to go back into bash rc like we were in before. I'm going to add these two export commands here and now I'm going to save and close that. We'll go back into bash and we'll export. Or we'll do an echo to make sure that they worked. There's that one and also let's do an echo for the LD library path as well. Okay that looks good so let's go to page 14. I'll clean off my screen and I will zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so from a permission standpoint, look at the output from this command here. And what this means is we need to do the, the copy as root. Okay, so here I am as root, and I'll just make a copy there. Okay, so now I'll skip down to page 102, and we will open up the Cognos configuration. I like to open it like this, but if that doesn't work for you, you'll have to update the database with something like, well, exactly, update db. And... And try it again and if you get this message it's because you need to log out so I will go ahead and do that now 
and log back in. We'll open up our terminal, relaunch the command. And this time you should see the splash screen and the tool should open up. Now in our case, we are going to configure Cognos to use DB2 for the content store. And that's essentially all the configuration Cognos has about itself, what well, needs to be in DB2. And to do that, we'll go to page 88 and you'll see we need a type 4 JDBC driver. And that means we're going to need a jar file, db2jcc. And if you're not familiar with that, JCC is the Java combined client. And what you essentially have here in the case of WAS, and in general, is a JDBC provider. That's the same thing as a driver. And really, that is just these jar files. And then separately, there's something called a data source, which is the configuration of the, uh, of the JDBC to use that driver. So that's the port, the server name, and that sort of thing. And that's essentially what they mean here. Type 4 driver is considered an independent product. You don't need to install the DB2 client because we're going to use JDBC. Okay, so I need to copy that jar file to from the data server onto our supplemental server. So I need to switch over to the data server. That's what I've done here. Now I'm going to do an SCP, which is a secure copy, and I'm going to copy it into this path. And that should go through just fine. And we'll need the license file, so we'll run this command and make sure that goes through. There it is. Okay, now we'll switch back to the supplemental server and we'll check the version of the driver. There it is. Okay, and now we need to create the database and we can do that with a script, so let's do that. So go back into our configuration utility, go to the content store, fill out these values, and you can see that we're using data ibm.com and I'm going to just test that port with a cat command. If you don't see any response, that means you're getting a good uh, response, it's working. If, for example, I tried some completely bogus support, you get an error. Okay, and now you need to configure the username and the password, which is here. Okay, plug in your values here, click OK. Set your database name here. I'm going to leave mine as the default. Then, right click on the content store and click Generate DDL. Click on Details and you'll see the path for that. It's also a good idea to test to see if that actually works. So click on test, okay, and you may get an error, so if that's the case, let's keep going. So now we need to take the SQL that was generated and transfer it over to our data server, so that's what I'm going to do now. Now log into your data server and go to that folder, of course we should be there anyway. But of course that command uh, had us log in as db 24 core always a good idea anyway to log in as your DB admin in this case. However, of course, it depends on however you want to set it up. In our case, we're keeping it simple. Also, to get the port, you can issue this command here. And then you'll see an actual port here and a service name here to get the actual service. Then you do a cat Etsy services and you can grep for DBJ in this case. There it is, 55100. Okay, we'll skip down to the next page and we will run the file that we just transferred over. SQL. I mistyped mine. There we go. That's what I meant. And it will create the database. This is going to take quite a bit of time, so I'm going to, we'll come back here in a minute. Once that finishes, you should see that it's connected over to the database, and you may see these authorization issues. This is saying that you're a DB admin, which you can confirm with a command like this after you connect to the database, of course. And you can see, indeed, we are dbadm here. So that sh looks good. So let's move to page 102, and let's rerun this test, see if we get a better result. And yes, we do. So let's click on Close, and now let's go up to Actions, and Start. Now, if you go to page 29, you'll see that Cognos actually runs on Liberty. That's WebSphere Application Liberty. And the path for that is here where WLP is WebSphere Liberty Profile. If I go back to my supplemental server, log in as Cognos, now notice the CD cog. Remember that alias I, we made earlier? CD cog is just CD into the folder that we need, which is listed here. Okay. Why did we do that? Because we want to go into the logs folder and now clear off the screen and we want to save the changes that we made. Now it's going to run the tests to run this. 
This is, by the way, creating the table. So if we go back to our DB2 and we do a connect to, logging in is our user, of course. Then we do a DB2 connect to CM. We can run a DB2 list tables for all. And sure enough, we are getting some information now, some tables in here. And really what we want is not so much list tables for all, but this particular database. So here we go. We're starting to see more and more data come in. We had 11 rows, 14 rows, and 15 rows. So the database is being filled in now. And if I switch over to our supplemental server, take a look at this, we're getting much more logging going on. If we make a small adjustment, miss typo from before, and we put a dollar sign here, because this is an expansion. Now we should be able to do a tail, tail L, which really is just going to give us a tail of whatever the last item in this list is here so that we can follow it. So tail L, there we go. And you can also do a, if you, if you list out all of your aliases, you can also do a tail pogo, which will show you the web server itself trying to start up and the information related to it. And you can, if you use root or set up screen a little bit better, uh, you can go to screen and you can log from here like this, do an LL, do an LLT and find the f most recent changes and run this. And we'll create a new screen with control A and then C. And again, we'll find out by going in here, what are the most recent logs? I like these two particularly. And we'll do a control A and a shift S and a control A tab and a control A space. And now we can see the two uh, logs at the same time. Okay, let's also click on details here. Then to get out of one of those, by the way, it's control C because we're doing less and then I'll Q and again, just to see what else is happening here. We'll do a less P2P and there we go. Okay, and you'll see that ours did not start. So click close and then we'll go to actions and we'll try to test it like so. And in our case, what happened was we simply needed to, uh, and you can see it running, was to go back up to actions and restart it because it just took so long to, to get going. So now we want to bring up the web interface to Cognos. And so we're going to try to get into the gateway. Go to page 15 for the explanation of the URIs, which they are. And we want this one specifically. So in other words, go to your machine and then go to the gateway uh, URL pattern there and there we go and now we have the base installation uh, up and running you'll see some things that need to be adjusted most notably the mail part the SMTP where I'm just going to blank out these values here and click yes right click on notification and test which is exactly the message you're going to get if you configure it wrong like I did where I didn't enter the recipient essentially here which in our case is this user here and no password and now if you right click and test it it will go right through. I hope that was useful. You, at this point you should now have a very basic system up and running on Linux for Cognos Analytics version 11.